So good morning, Tom. Good morning, Samantha. It's a pleasure to be back with you again after the panel that we've had on food security and entitlement. And uh, we'd like to start by asking you to reflect on the insights from that panel that are relevant from the global level to the India level about how we take these strategies forward for the food security enactment and action on the ground mm -hmm. in India. Some thoughts from you on okay. that. Okay, well thank you. It was a great pleasure being on that panel. Um, I suppose what I took out of it firstly is that for the extreme poor, the people that Concern is working with in Orissa, uh, the commons is a very important source of livelihood and therefore if their, oh, their livelihood is, is to be protected and developed, then access to the common resources are, is critical. And what, then the frameworks that need to be put in place there uh, have, to be, have to be dealt with. Uh, another dimension I thought of the discussion was the whole broader er area of food security. And clearly in that context, the fact that uh, the government is of India is working on a food security act to give, give effect to the right to food becomes very important. And how that's done in practice uh, is, is going to be of great significance. Now, certainly one of the other contributors referred to the need to build in millet into the, uh, into the, the, into the public distrib PDS distribution system, which seems to me to be a, a sensible uh, suggestion. suggestion. Um, because yesterday I had the, the great pleasure of vis visiting the Deccan Development Society and I got, I think, a real insight into the lives of very poor people and the importance of their having access to seeds and other resources in order to protect their, uh, uh, protect their livelihoods. So I, I felt the panel, in a sense, opened up a lot of these discussions. We probably didn't end up with any firm conclusions in some of them, but it was a good open discussion and I think very valuable for, for that. Because in the panel there was also this mention about the dilemmas between food self-sufficiency and the linkages with the international markets on mm -hmm. food and the question of futures trading. So would you like to comment on the strategy that India would need to take forward on that? Well, my own view is that, you know, we live in a very globalized world at the moment and inevitably there is the India as a key trader in that world will be trading and trading in food products uh, as a matter of routine uh, in the future. Certainly what I saw yesterday uh, I think shows that there is also a value though in some the sensible thinking on food sovereignty within communities so that people at that level have control of resources and have sufficient food themselves and, and are, are not dependent, if you like, on major external input. So I don't see that there is ultimately a, a fundamental contradiction between supporting that sort of movement, because I think that's what people need, but also having, you know, the realistic view that there, that there is going to have to be, to be trading. I don't, I wouldn't think that food sovereignty at the national level makes any sense for India, but food sovereignty at the local level, I think, uh, you know, in certain circumstances has a lot to commend it. So the entitlement process for natural resource, um, for people, to be able to ensure food sovereignty then becomes part of that perspective of the commons that informs the strategies there. Very much. And, and I think also not just the entitlement, the fact that I suppose production is managed in, in a certain way and, and a certain type of production uh, is, 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 is supported. I think there does need to be more probably research done at the official level, both in India and internationally, as to how these fragile farming systems can build on the, the wisdom of generations, if you like, mm -hmm. so you're, that is all being captured. And yet there must also be some openness, I would think, to introducing modern uh, ways of doing things and perhaps modern technologies. But that's, I think, for the research to, to establish. Mm -hmm. But certainly uh, some of the issues of access to, to seeds um, um, at the right time, etc., and arrangements that people can plant seeds at the right time and harvest at the right time, and then, as was I saw yesterday, sell some of that produce at a, at a premium price mm -hmm. in the markets. All of that, I think, comes into uh, a, commu the, the, a community having 
having a chance of making a better living. Self-sufficiency Self and yes, market. Yes, yes. Tom, you have been in the bureaucracy in your country and at international levels, and now as executive director of Concern Worldwide, what are the significant challenges and opportunities you see in this role vis-a-vis -vis your previous roles towards influencing strategies and policies on food security on, and on entitlement to commons for communities, specifically in the context of India? Well, I think in India and in elsewhere, if I can take the bureaucratic mind, it's going to be obviously influenced by political context, but it also is going to have to be influenced by, uh, I would say, material which is presented to it, or evidence which is prevented, presented to it, in support of what uh, an, a non-governmental organisation is saying. So that is very relevant to Concern's uh, approach to supporting the work of the Commons, and in particular FES here in, in, in India, because we haven't just been involved in supporting this conference, we've been supporting a number of things over the past uh, few, three years. Some of those have been policy research papers. One of them was an examination of the Government of India's policy on commons, and that, I think, was presented uh, to the National Advi to the Planning Commission. Uh, another piece of work which we've supported is the, the vocabulary of commons, a book which has just been published, yes. which I think is an excellent piece of work. Yes. And that is really capturing the voices of the people who are active in the work of the commons, the people on the ground. And I think that's another dimension of trying to influence policy. I mean, what I think we as an organisation do, and it is what we should do, and it is what we do do, is to learn from our work on the ground. Mm -hmm. So we're informed by the voices, by the interests, by the values of the people who are on the ground. And we can help then, though, in helping present those voices, probably through organizations like FES, to the bureaucrats, to the government ministers. Mm -hmm. And I think some of the opportunities that I've had here at this particular meeting to interact with senior people from the Indian government have been actually very valuable. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it all goes together and I think, I think there is a, these are two separate worlds, the worlds of the non-governmental and the bureaucrat, but there has to be a coming together at some point mm -hmm. if, there, if, there is, if change is to, is to be brought about. Mm -hmm. One of the things that you did raise at the panel, too, was the need for increasing the spaces of dialogue and discourse on the management of natural resource in a rights perspective. Yes. And, um, do you see Concern's role in taking that agenda forward? And what would be the flags, then, that you would like to highlight in your work related to policy? Well, Concern has adopted a rights perspective to a lot of its work, uh, and particularly it's relevant here in India because I think you have a, 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 a space, a, a political and civil society space, to have a dialogue, mm -hmm. which you don't have in many other developing countries. Yes. It need, that needs to be said. Uh, then in terms of, of uh, how that space is best used, I think it is about there has to be fundamentally a mutual respect between the parties. I mean, people have to be willing to listen to each other mm -hmm. and therefore they have to know how to talk to each other. Mm -hmm. And they also then, I think, have to have something practical to, to say. Yeah. So that does get back to the level of, of having the, the quality research on, done on the ground, which is informed by the realities on the ground. Mm -hmm. And I think if, if uh, non-governmental organizations can come to politicians and to bureaucrats with well-informed policy research, mm -hmm. it, they have to have a better chance of achieving mm -hmm. change in that regard. So um, if we look at the whole environment of food security and the equity perspectives within that, mm. Um, one of the key issues that always comes up is the whole issue of child malnutrition, mm -hmm. as well as of uh, women's roles in the management and in the um, resilient strategies for mm. food security. Mm. And concerns work in both these contexts has been critical. So, uh, but taking that to policy 
forums and to policy spaces, I would imagine, is critical to informing these also from those perspectives, isn't it? It is. I mean, the first thing to say is I think that the broad heading of food security is now back on the high political agenda, right. both in India and internationally. But then there's a debate as to, you know, what type of food security. Right. And this issue of entitlements and access, <clears throat> one of the great insights of Amartya Sen, uh, the great Indian economist, is that it is entitlements and access that are critical. And so you need certainly a strand for a food security policy, a strand of, of agricultural production, so that, I mean, the world is going to need to produce more food over the next coming decades. Decades. But you need other systems in place to make sure that people who are who will not have access to who not who don't produce them food themselves, uh, poor people, will have other access. And that's where I think things like public distribution systems come into play. But they need to be the safety net. I mean, the dominant strain of a food security policy is a country being able to produce uh, the large proportion of the food that it needs and get it to the people. There is another dimension which you do refer to, is, is the issue of child malnutrition. And this is notwithstanding India's great success as an economy and as a society in recent decades. I fear it is, you know, it has to be said that the level of child malnutrition in India is actually a scandal. I mean, 40 over 40% of the undernourished children in the world are now in India. And the levels of anemia. And, the level, and all of that goes, beyond, goes along with that. And one of the big, I think, advances internationally over the past uh, three to five years is this critical insight that if a child is not properly nourished in the first two years of his or her life, that has a permanent effect, physically and mentally, and it results in stunting. So a country that that has high levels of early childhood malnutrition is actually cutting off its future economic and social growth possibilities. Mm -hmm. So I think India really has to face up to this problem in a much more serious way mm -hmm. than, it, than it has up to now. And that is, it means, I think, actually specific targeted nutrition interventions for the under twos. Mm -hmm. And that is something that Concern has been very strongly advocating internationally. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we're, we're, we're doing work in that area in a number of different countries and we're trying to bring uh, the advocacy on this to the very highest levels. Yeah. Um, the, whole, <coughs> the way that processes pan out in the development sphere has uh, revealed that tribal and Dalit populations who are the most commons dependent communities in the country are also the most um, deprived in terms of food securities, access to resources, and therefore the implications for women and children particularly in the communities of vulnerabilities and very high levels of crisis in malnutrition mm. is very evident today in India. Mm. And Concern has been working with those communities particularly. And I would imagine that you would have particular strategies that you would like to suggest in terms of how those issues can be addressed mm. in the context of your work and in the context of the current debates of um, the Food Security Act. Mm -hmm. And that one of the issues that came up was about not only the PDS entitlement system mm. to government services, but also looking at natural resource regimes and the rights within that. Mm. So how do you see that being taken forward through the donor community in India? <coughs> And what role do you see for concern? Well, I, I think some of the work we've done in, in, uh, in helping support an analysis of the, um, uh, the uh, an analysis of the government of India's policy on commons uh, will reveal that the um, the dependence of very poor people on access to commons. Yes. And so building that insight into whatever legislation emerges, I think, obviously has to, has to be an important part of an overall strategy. I mean, I don't have sufficient knowledge about how the Food Security Act is to be <coughs> implemented in detail. 
Uh, <coughs> so I'm, I don't personally have anything to say on the actual mechanics of that. But clearly, the, the, the vulnerabilities that you refer to, the vulnerabilities of, of, of women and young children, they ha that, those vulnerabilities, again, have to be reflected in whatever administrative mechanisms are put in place. On the, matern the wider maternal and child health issues, uh, one of the p important projects concern is, 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 is implementing in, um, in, in ERISA is one on maternal and child health. It's, it's a project supported by the uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And again, we're looking there at innovative ways to deal with this problem because particularly maternal health, maternal mortality is still at levels in ERISA state, which it shouldn't be at. Mm -hmm. And so finding new ways of, of dealing with this is, is very important. And in doing that, we're working very closely with the Ministry of Health, with the Ministry of Health at ERISA level. But we would hope that any findings that emerge from that work would be relevant to the wider nation of India. Okay. So we look forward to much more active engagement on enabling people and policy to recognize the role of the commons and access to those resources to, uh, for people to have security of food and sovereignty of food, an mm -hmm. issue that you did flag. Um, one last question <coughs> for you, Tom. Uh, what do you think uh, about this conference and how we take these agendas forward mm -hmm. and the interface that has occurred here uh, your comments on the, on the mm. event, on mm. this conference, on mm. the commons. I, I think it's been a great event. Um, I think there's been, a, firstly, it's been very well organized. Uh, but more, more importantly, it, it's, uh, the content has been very, uh, of a very good level, I think. Uh, I think there's been very insightful comments uh, about, you know, the challenges facing the commons, but also and it struck a very, there's a number of quite positive things happening. We heard earlier this morning about a number of the positive things happening both in India and globally. And I think it's one of the challenges now is how, you know, you can, that momentum can be built upon. And I think I see this event as having had an important role uh, in that regard. The other really, I think, positive part of this event was just the interaction between people. Uh, a very diverse range of people here, not just from within India, but internationally. And that was, I think, very good. And I think the, the field trip that uh, was organized yesterday uh, has been widely praised. And the one that I personally was on was the Deccan Development Society, which was absolutely first class and gave a great insight into the lives of Dalit women and how, how how much progress they have made over the past 25 years in reclaiming uh, their rights in, and it's not just around food, it's about a whole sense of a greater sense of equality, a whole dignity. sense that dignity that, and so they were all I think hugely encouraging events. There was also of course a presence here, the Minister for uh, the environment and forest. And forest. Yeah, uh, yeah, he spoke very well on the opening occasion, and of course, you had other. I think the the quality of the keynote addresses, have in particular, struck me as being very good. Very good. I mean, it's not often at these international conferences you you get a consistently high quality of these keynote addresses, and it happened here. And then the smaller panel discussions. Uh, where people are, have a chance to talk to each other. Very good. So, I mean, overall, I have nothing negative to say and many, many positive things to say about how this whole event took place. That's wonderful. <laughs> so we see you as a champion of the commons and of the rights and entitlements to the commons in future discourses. Well, I hope so. I look forward to a role for All that, right. in, for concern as well as for you in okay. that. Thank you Thank very you. much, Summer. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. <laughs>